Hello. So how do you center yourself? How do you calm yourself at the end of the day or any time that you want to just get to that place where you feel a little more powerful? Tonight we're going to talk about the power of meditation. I'm Dan Bagley and I'm with Shireen Chada. She is with the Brahma Kumaris and they have some meditation training that I think you're going to find interesting. So Shireen, talk to me about how one uses meditation and what it does for them. Um, many times I feel that people don't know the full scope of what actually meditation is. And in a way I feel it's um, giving it a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> because meditation, people feel it could be just a mantra or it could just be a visualization or they look at a candle or they just watch their thoughts or things like that. But actually the word meditation itself comes from the Latin word nadere, which means healing, which is the same derivative as medicine. Mm -hmm. And so healing here, so meditation is actually a healing that happens. Ah. But the healing happens if based on an inner dialogue. So for us in the Brahma Kumaris, we have three aspects of the soul or the self, three aspects. And there's the mind, there's the intellect, and then there are the impressions. And so the mind is where the thoughts arise. And it's actually the messenger of the soul. And the intellect is where reasoning and awareness and understanding happens. And the impressions are, are the archives or wherever you put all your records. Mm -hmm. And so the impressions are actually key to life in that whatever is going on in your impressions, the mind is picking up. It's give, t telling you the message, I'm happy, I'm not happy, I'm doing this. And so when people say, I want peace of mind, they're actually addressing the wrong thing because they're not going into and seeing what impressions is causing the peacelessness. So you, because it's, it's the, the player that's playing on the field, it's like a computer, it's like when you are upset with the computer and you punch the monitor, the monitor is just the messenger, so the mind is just the messenger. Uh, I see. And so, um, and so in the Brahma Kumari's form of meditation, we take both the mind and our awareness and understanding, both of them, and focus. With both the focus, then we can change the impressions. So we are no longer slave to our records. We are no longer slave to our experiences. We can actually change our experience. So when you're focusing, what are you focusing on? Um, it could be as simple as, I am a soul, I'm the master, I'm the driver of this body. I see. And so not only do you focus on who you are, your form, but also an understanding of who it is actually you are. You're not the label. Mm -hmm. So you have an awareness. So actually they go in order. You get knowledge. And you know when people say knowledge is power, mm -hmm. what is, which knowledge is power? If there is power in, let's say, if I know how to operate a computer or how to fix a computer, there's power because... Sure. I get power. But imagine how much power I would get, inner power I could, would get if I really knew about myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so you, we do give a base of knowledge. And so in that, and so in a meditation what we would do is we would focus, we would come into understanding. So the knowledge gives us understanding. And from that understanding, we can sit in a particular awareness of mm -hmm. something like, for example, if I have the knowledge that I'm a soul and not this body, then I can, I have that understanding. And then that understanding, I can sit in this awareness that where is the soul? I am the soul and I'm not this body. And that awareness will actually give me an experience. Mm -hmm. And in that, we talked last program about financial worries and the like. So apply that to the meditation thing. Are you just focusing, does the financial focus ever come into it or is it just I no. am a soul, this no. is who I really am? Yeah, um, it's a good question. You never focus on what you don't want. Mm -hmm. You always focus on what you want. Ah, that's a very important part. 
because focusing on what because what you focus on grows in your life. Yeah, therefore. right, right. And also, when you look at the soul, the way the soul works, the way mm -hmm. the self works, as opposed to everyone knows how the body works, but I feel now is the time that every one of us should know how the soul works. Mm -hmm. So the way the soul works is whatever I'm focusing, I'm using my mind and whatever I'm using my intellect or my understanding and my awareness, that is what happens with my impressions. And so if my focus is love, if my focus is peace, if my focus is my original innate qualities, Mm -hmm. then that is what is going to play out. That's what starts to grow. That's what starts to grow. And so people might say, but I need money. I, you know, why, why do I need peace at this point? Mm -hmm. But no, intrinsically, every one of us need peace and happiness. Uh -huh. That's why we are doing what we are doing. We might, not, we might have lost the plot line along the way and just going after money for money's sake. But initially we started because we thought that's going to bring us happiness. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, and so we have to stay focused on happiness. Mm -hmm. And so maybe what times are telling us and what everything else is telling us is that however you've been going about getting your happiness is the wrong way. That there's uh -huh. another way. And that meditation has that power to bring us happiness, to bring us peace, to bring us real love, true love, to bring us purity, a sense of love, a community, a sense of bliss, right. power, knowledge, all of these things. And so we have to focus on those. So many people have an idea that meditation is a very strange, they get pictures of the yogis sitting in a strange position and all. Is that how the no. Brahma Kumaris do it? No, no. Uh, you can sit however you want. Uh -huh. If you are unable to sit, unable, not unwilling, unable to sit, then you can lie down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you, um, but we do meditate with our eyes open. And there is a very, <sighs> important reason why we meditate with our eyes open. And that is, um, we want to bring this into my everyday activity. When I'm walking, when I'm moving, when I'm talking, when I'm being yelled at from my boss, when I'm being cut off in traffic, I need this. And so we practice with our eyes open so I can bring it into. Uh -huh. And so you can sit however you want, keep your eyes open, and then meditate on the knowledge base. So, we, you, we, so the knowledge base has both visual, mm -hmm. it has understanding and awareness to it, and, and it has understanding and awareness not just about the soul, about every aspect of life, uh, about every virtue, every value, every quality that is intrinsic to the soul. So it has an awareness of these things. And so you meditate with that, and then those things start automatically playing out in your life. So we're living in such an immediate gratification world. How long does it take to start feeling the effects of meditation? Um, like anything else, it's you get what you put into it. And so if you want to immediately um, completely become self-realized and um, be happy all the time, that might take a little <laughs> time, <laughs> but you will see immediate results actually. As soon as you start shifting your identity, as soon as you start shifting your awareness, you'll start seeing results. So the meditation isn't an end in itself so much as just one of the portals for self-discovery of who right. you truly are inside. Right, right. it's a journey. Mm -hmm. And um, and I feel every one of us needs to be on that journey right now. Whatever religion we are, whatever walk of life we are from, whatever um, way we are in, that we need to be on that journey. And we need to discover that journey for ourselves in a way. Mm -hmm. So even if people are in whatever church they would be in, they can still come to the BK uh, place, wherever it is, and learn to meditate and apply it in their own way yeah, and with their own religion. With their own religion, that they don't yeah. have to give it up. Um, but the, the space 
we need to create a quiet space. Mm -hmm. And meditation is something that creates a quiet space within myself. And when I create this quiet space within myself, my creativity, my original nature, my innate qualities, all of those things start playing out. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I've, I've long believed that there's two ways to help something grow, and one of them works. The way that doesn't work, take a stalk of corn or a small plant, is to pull on the stalk and yell at it. The way to make it grow or help it grow is to give it a protected environment with nutrients, water, love, and let it grow at its own rate. That's what I'm hearing you say. Meditation is that safe spot where we, the natural, whatever is in our spiritual and physical DNA gets to outplay right, in right. that environment. In that environment, it's well put. That's exactly how it happens. So, how many years have you been meditating? Um, Sixteen years. Oh wow! So, in can you tell? Are you aware of differences now, having been doing it sixteen years, um, as definitely. opposed to your first year? Does it get better and better and better? Oh yes, yes, yes. It does get better and better and better. Um, I would say in the last two, three years, I saw a quantum uh, leap in mm -hmm. the way I progressed. And so nowadays I get up in the morning with this amazing feeling, I won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the physical lottery, right. but the, the, spiritual, the, spiritual lottery. <laughs> the spiritual lottery, I won the lottery. And so, um, and so I would say that maybe I was a slow learner and you might not need 13 years to come to that spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, that it's um, exponential. It grows mm -hmm. exponentially. And th it also really, there's one other aspect of meditation. It's not just about what you're thinking, but you have to make certain changes to your lifestyle, mm -hmm. and that's very, very important. And then there's power because you are um, using your lifestyle to empower your mind, to empower the soul. Mm -hmm. um, and so those changes take a little bit to get into place, to actually understand why you need to make those changes in your lifestyle. And so, because everything you do really affects the mind. Exactly. Now I know people watching are wondering what in the world are those changes, so give us um, those as well. Yes, because especially they're seeing me in a white sari and thinking, <laughs> people have to exactly. sit in their white saris. And no, no, no one's, um, it's not required at all that you change your clothes. Um, the thing, the change in lifestyle, the two or three changes in lifestyle that I would suggest, recommend, is that they get up in the morning and make time for it. Even though meditation is about shifting your consciousness, you do need to make time, and then your consciousness starts shifting. Ah, very good. And so you have to, and so you have to bookend your days. You have to start your day well. You have to end your day well. Mm -hmm. So you have to start your day with meditation and end your day with meditation. And so, and, the, and everything else in between then. Starts Even, connecting it, yes, two. it starts connecting with those two. So that's very, very important. And the other thing, and so to wake up early in the morning, some of us wake up very early in the morning, but to wake up early in the morning, um, that's one thing. And the other thing is um, I would definitely recommend, I don't want to sound like an activist, but I would definitely recommend a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why we recommend a vegetarian diet is because the what we eat affects the mind. Mm -hmm. And if I am um, eating things that have been killed in violence, then it really affects the mind. And there was this one time Dadi Janki was saying, Dadi Janki, mm -hmm. I'm sure you've met her, um, it was saying that um, the violence in Western society is because of the amount of meat people eat. How interesting, yeah. Now, I know that people are going to, if they, if they have not ever experimented with vegetarianism, are going to say, is there anything good? Am I just eating iceberg lettuce? And I... <laughs> 
no, actually, there's a whole world out there of vegetarian uh, th things. And so, no, definitely to explore that, to see that it really works. So now research is showing, completely research is showing how good it is for your body. But what we are saying is it is the only thing that is going to really make changes to your mind. If you want peace and happiness, you have to live by those principles, not only for yourself, but for the environment. So if you treat the environment the way you want to be treated, if you treat animals the way you want to be treated, mm -hmm. then you will find peace. And I can say having eaten the Brahma Kumari's foods, which is part of this program as well, in this, it can just be amazing. So it, it isn't giving up as much as it might sound to, uh, to the carnivore part uh, of the people of us listening. Yeah, no, yeah. it's definitely not. It's wonderful. There are many, many wonderful uh, recipes people mm -hmm. can do and really explore, and they really feel better. Mm -hmm. You really actually start feeling better. So you think everybody doesn't walk around feeling like today I won the spiritual lottery when they wake up. Ed, I believe your time is, what, four in the morning you typically get up? That's impressive. I feel like a slacker sleeping <laughs> until five. <laughs> Um, that took a while getting used to, yeah. but um, the thing is, um, so those two I would definitely, and mm -hmm. also to find a community, to find a community of meditators and to meditate with a community. Many people say in many meditation environments that there is something about the number of people getting together and meditating that almost of itself brings it to another level. Is that your experience? Yeah, yeah. It's not like, you know, one and one, it becomes two. Yeah. It's almost like each person that comes in and comes in with that intention to stay focused and to stay yeah. meditative, it increases exponentially. Yeah, that's uh, so the true synergy of the group starts coming in uh, as well. Yeah, it really helps. It helps build a uh, consciousness, it helps build a vibration in the room that really helps. Mm -hmm. My experience having visited uh, your BK Center I don't know, a number of times is you feel it the moment you walk into the space. And also, I, I feel that when I walk into certain churches also, that you can, you can sense that, that wonderfulness of the, the touching the spiritual self. So that, that I, I believe that there, the meditation piece of it uh, is very big for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would definitely recommend. I, uh, I meditate in a gathering every morning, not mm -hmm. only on my own at four, but half an hour um, later so in the morning. For people who are thinking about meditating and putting their toe in the water, clearly learning with a group would be something beneficial. Uh, how much per day, I mean, you're pretty, you're pretty involved in the BKs, but how much per day would the average person do well to meditate, would you say? I would say start with 15 minutes, half an hour, per and day. then increase it. Mm -hmm. So, we're talking about a 15-minute start to feeling better about ourselves and getting our world a little more in balance and understanding who we truly are. Sounds like something we'd like to try. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Shreen. Good night.